so today is the third sunday of the easter season and the theme for this week is our identity in christ as hasini has introduced the theme in the start of the um, service today and we would be looking about how do we embrace our true nature as the children of god and so today i'll talk about what do we understand about our identity in christ what does it mean and how can we use this identity and our understanding of this identity to face life challenges in our day to day life i remember some time back i have also used uh, a bit of this information in my in my previous sermons about our identity uh, in christ but today we will go in depth uh, about this subject uh, so the worldly definition of identity often revolves around the characteristics traits roles and affiliation that define an individual within a society so basically some of the role that we do the characteristics the traits the kind of association or affiliation that we have within a society defines who we are as a individual and this identity can comprise of various attributes so if you want to see the various aspect of uh, identities first is personal attributes now this includes traits like personality your talent uh, your physical appearance uh, appearance now these personal attributes also define our identity in worldly terms second is the roles that we play now identity can also be shaped by the role individual occupies in the society a parent a spouse employee student or student leader community leader president sometime even in the in the christian circle it is referred to as senior pastor de- deacon some people are known by the prophets and bishops and so on the third one is the cultural and ethnic background now sometime identity may also be influenced by our cultural heritage our ethnicity our nationality and our language i am marathi some people say oh we are reddies uh we are from north we are from south we are hindi speaking so often the worldly identity can also comprise of cultural and ethnic background then the next one is belief and values now one's identity can also be shaped by the religious or philosophical beliefs political affiliations and moral values right S- some say we are christians we are associated with this some says we are hindus we are muslims we are sikh and some says oh we belong to this party some uh, some said oh uh, we follow this if you talk with jains they'll say these are the moral values we follow so they'll try to define their identity in the beliefs and values and the last one is interest and hobbies now you'll be very surprised our identity can also be tied to our interest our hobbies our passions and individual pursue you would have heard oh he is a known youtube blogger oh he is a uh, he he uh, somebody is about he covers how the games can be played online so various interests and hobbies can also define our identity now where one finds their identity can vary depending on their perspective and life experience so our identity in worldly terms can vary from the perspective and life experience which means uh, in a worldly context we can identify uh, our identity can be sought in various terms so one is one of the way where we can sort our identity is through external validation which means many people seek validation and recognition from others bashing their identity to an exterior external opinion societal norms and cultural expectation so this is where we sort our identity through some sort of external validation 
where people say oh he is a very good leader oh he is a very good this oh he so every other external validation confirms our identity correct the second is the way of this thing is achievement and success now some individual drive their derive their identity from their accomplishment their career success their wealth or social status we know that many many time we can say oh have you seen how much this person has achieved so his identity is in his achievement sometimes we say have you seen in the age of 30s he is the cto ceo he is the cfo he has achieved such a great career success sometimes we we call somebody with have you seen that guy has accumulated so much of wealth so often the identity is also sought in achievements and success then the other way of uh, identity sort is comparison and completion now in a culture that values competition and comparison some people may define their identity in relation to others striving to outperform or conform to certain standards now that means i am better than them they have this car we have this big car or i want to have like them we want to have a lifestyle like certain people or we are often in a race to conform to certain standards oh no people go out twice a week to eat so when we go twice out to eat we some, sometimes thinks right now we fit into this mold where people can identify us then the next one of identity where we look for for the fulfillment of identity is material possession now we have to agree that we live in a consumer driven society some individual may seek to define themselves by the possessions they own and many proudly sometimes we can say oh come see my possession of gadgets see my possession of games see my possession of toys for ladies see my possession of purses and the sandals and the sarees and the dresses for us how many cars we put in the garage how many bikes we have so often we try to seek our identity through the material possession and the last one is social media and online presence now this is where our youth our young people excel with the rise of social media many people curate their identities based on how they present online and there is often a joke what our profile photo says in instagram facebook is different and what our aadhar photo says is what we are right so often we have a very different way of presenting ourselves on our social media because we feel somehow the way we present ourselves also uh, defines our identity of who we are sometimes we try to seek validation through the number of likes sometime you go for a holiday or you meet somebody you post it and now you're waiting for the number of likes number of follow uh, how many people are following how many people are sharing your your stories how many comments have you received and sometime in that race when you don't receive the kind of comments you think you somehow feel that your identity is no more what it used to be so the problem is any uh, or all of these may feel like solid foundation now for a while it may seek that these kind of identity are solid foundation but let me tell you none of them are permanent none of them are permanent any of them can change the parameters without warning what you feel successful today or what you feel this is the identity today in any areas which we talk social media material position come uh what we own what we are known as it can change any time if you base your identity on things like success things like wealth power physical appearance and so on then we are setting ourselves up for great disappointment we will be disappointed a sudden job loss could leave you question your choices in life one time you are suddenly using your identity to who you are at the professional workplace and now suddenly the next day when you lose your job now you question the very choices you made 
Now, if you ask somebody who has a great status in the society, even a small piece of gossip aimed at you, even though it is untrue, can damage your entire reputation. And if you are somebody who is taking a, a, a you are seeking your identity on your physical appearance on how smart you are or how beautiful you are, then do know that our appearance will change as we get older. And so, my dear family, there is a problem with the worldly identities. There is a clear danger in following and living up to these worldly identities. Now, it may seem that this particular identity may give us appreciation and visibility we think we should have. But the worldly identity might give us appreciation and visibility that we think we should have, but they are not permanent. And since they are not permanent, the world can snatch your identity in any moment. And what happens? We are broken, we are shattered, and we are lost. Because the subsequently, the standards of these worlds are ever changing. That means we need to continue to prove our identities. And when we are in such a race, my dear family, it can be exhaustive and tiring. And besides, as we grow older, our identities keep on changing. When we were in school, our identity, for example, were in, if we are a school topper, if we are the best player in a game or so on and so forth. When we move from college, our identity is into measured it into our popularity, our influence, how good we are in studies. When we move into job, it goes, our identity moves from becoming an outperformer, becoming a success, having such a lot of uh, networking with people. If we are in a business, our identity is measured in the kind of growth we bring, the kind of profits we bring. Correct? The thing is, when, when we are in one stage, even in one stage, the identities keep on changing. And what we were counting as success yesterday could not be the same today. The definition of worldly identities keep on changing. And that's why there is a clear danger in following and living up to these worldly identities. Because it cannot provide you assurance. It cannot provide you permanence. And it cannot give you your existence. Then what is the solution? God, however, yeah. God, however, is unchanging. He is reliable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you find your identity in him, you will never ultimately be let down because he has proven over time and time again to be trustworthy. The Bible says that all the men and women are created in God's image. Humankind was created to reflect God's attribute. Now, you can look your identity anywhere, but followers of Jesus Christ are called to find our identity in Him and Him alone. In Him and Him alone. And so, let us understand our identity in Christ. Our rightful identity is that we are children of God through Christ. We are children of God through Christ by the Spirit, as Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 29. And he says, so in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. We are all children of God through faith. Each one, each one of you, each one of us here are children of God in Jesus Christ through faith. Then he goes on to say, uh, in verse 28, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in Christ Jesus. We are one. Even though we are uniquely created, in his eyes, he doesn't measure up one less and the other high. We are one. And what is the outcome of it? We are all heirs according to the promise. 
in christ we have one identity as the children of god through faith our identity in christ is not temporary like we have in the worldly terms but instead it is permanent now worldly identities might have discrimination but here in christ we are all one and apostle paul guarantees us that as abraham's seed we are co heirs with christ as the equal heirs as he says in romans chapter 8 verse 16 to 17 the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are god's children right and now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of god and co heirs with christ what a promise we have a permanent promise a permanent identity so if we know who we are in christ then this awareness has a transformative power of knowing our identity and to be able to understand our identity as a follower of christ we need to understand how god sees us now it might be very tempting to build our identity on what we accomplish according to the world but this is not a stable foundation our true identity is ultimately based on what god has done for us in the bible god tells us often about how he views his people and so let's take a view now to see what he says about each one of you and us and about me and the first one is we are the word of god says we are loved in christ we are loved we are created with a purpose we are not just a convenient carbon copy of someone else you and i were created uniquely created uniquely and with a intention each one of you each one of us god lovingly designed every detail of who we are as a person and can you imagine the kind of love that is involved when somebody is busy into such a intricate design right and we can get that uh, assurance when we read from king david's own words uh, in psalm 139 he says you for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb i praise you because i am fearfully and wonderfully made and he goes on to say your works are wonderful and i know that well he is testifying and then he goes on saying my frame was not hidden from you when i was made in a secret place how each one of us would turn out god has made us so uniquely correct your eyes have seen my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in the book before any one of them to came to be every aspect was so nicely designed and planned by god do you think is it a, is it a, a production from a company he has spent such a unique time for each one of you because that much precious we are for him we are loved we are loved and that is our identity the second aspect is we are cared in christ we are not only loved but we are uh, chosen we are cared for god sent his own son to on earth to die in our place so that we could be included in his family now god was not obliged to choose us based on our performance or credentials he chose us to carry out an intricate plan that involved the death of his own perfect son and that has allowed each one of us an opportunity to be a child of god an apostle paul describes and expounds this idea so well in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 and he goes on to say but you are a chosen people who we are we are a chosen people we are a royal priesthood and we are a holy nation and god calls us what his special possession 
and he goes on to say in verse 10 once you were not a people but now you are a people of god once you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy my dear family we are not a mistake but we are chosen when we are loved and we are wanted the next next aspect is we are forgiven now in order to be counted as a child of a perfect father we had to be free of sin that is we had to be perfect with regard to doing right and nothing doing wrong but that is such a tall order considering no one but jesus was or is so perfect and no one can attain perfection on their own however because jesus who was without sin died the death that we should have on the cross so that we can be forgiven of our sin what we have done wrong is no more counted as wrong against us and all that christ did is counted for us as righteousness and this forgiveness allows us to be considered as a child of god and therefore remind yourself every day therefore in god's eyes he doesn't see us with our baggage of sin with our baggage of failures with our baggage of disappointment but he sees us as the one completely forgiven from his perspective we are without sin it's not that we won't sin but when he look at us as his child we are forgiven and this is something on which we should build our identity the next is we are redeemed now what does our forgiveness mean forgiveness means that we are redeemed that is christ sacrifice has brought us back from the forces of sin and evil that once owned and controlled us and he made us his own now when god look at us he does not see us as a former sinner a former failure a former disappointment a former arrogant person he does not see us in the light of who we were once but he see us as his own redeemed a new creation that has been made whole in christ jesus and as we see in ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in him we have redemption redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the richness of god's grace with the richness of god's grace that's our identity we are redeemed we do not have to define ourselves in the in the in in the light of our past mistake god does not do that we can walk in the identity of someone who is made new in christ jesus that is the identity with which you and i need to walk now the message i am bringing to you is not something new all the christian around the world know this by heart who we are in christ jesus because we have we have been taught this right from our sunday school days and despite knowing this fact about who we are in christ jesus from our childhood yet we fail to exercise our identity when the need arise have you ever wondered why why is that we fail over and over again and fall uh, into the same pit of where how the worldly identities are why is that you and i myself included when we go through the challenges we forget our identity in christ and we start handling these challenges from our own understanding our own abilities and the authority that we have from our worldly identity because we think that's the experience we have that's the uh, uh, legacy we have that i know how to solve my problem now let me give you one example all of us who have cars know that in our car there is a toolbox and there is a health aid box but when the situation come we know that we can use the tools to 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 uh, to take care of the problem that ever arises but 
whenever the problem has come we are not so confident at all because we don't know which tool to use how to open it where the stepney is how can i even open the spare wheel if something goes wrong what all medicines we have even we don't know how to apply and similarly is the fact about being aware of our identity is christ is one thing but when the challenges come we don't know how to exercise that authority as a children of god we very well know who we are but we don't know how to exercise this authority why does this happen this is because just being aware of our identity is christ is not sufficient for you and me to go through life challenges it's not sufficient we need to know how to exercise this authority that come from our identity as a child of god let me give you one example the athlete who trained for olympics they train every day hours and hours sometimes the training goes for 8 to 10 years before they get a chance to compete in that one event that lasts for just 10 minutes why do they practice it over and over and years and years so that when that perfect moments come they know how to handle it and how to convert that thing into a winning they know how to make that so how much time we spend with god trying to know who he is and who we are in relation to him how much time we spend with god to call ourselves as uh, having a life of union and communion with god how confident we are in our faith and relationship with god that he is just to tell and uh, and be really uh, be always confident that he is with us all the time how many times do we remind ourselves about our identity in christ as the loved as the chosen as the favored as the forgiven as redeemed how much time do we spend uh in as a god child facing the challenges being aware that the very power of christ is within us you see we can only face life challenges with our identity as a child of god when we have a constant and deep relationship with god knowing is another thing but having that deep relation is the way we can exercise our identity being aware of who god is and what god has done for us and praying might not be sufficient we need to have a deeper relationship with god in christ by the spirit only when we have a healthy knowledge of who our god is only then we will be able to face these challenges as his children holding firmly on the promises that we he has given us now i'll be very honest all of us go through challenges some are small and some are quite difficult as a person we cannot understand other people's challenges but let me give you some of the examples of our life challenges and how we can resolve it as a children of god as our identity as in christ and the first is the area of work some of us are facing such life challenges in the area of work now the challenges could be the complexity of work you do or your challenges to work with a team or you are having a boss uh, trouble with your boss you have a fear of losing job growth is not happening increment is not happening there is no appreciation for the hard work you put people are not accepting your leadership these are very real problem that we faced in the area of life in the area of our work now there are many issues in the area of our relationship as well in our relationship sometimes we are offended because someone has hurt our feelings we are hurt because someone is not taking us to a manner in which we expect them to treat us we are hurt because we feel somebody is not listening to us we are hurt because we feel somebody is not giving the very respect and the very love that we should have received these are real problems in the relationship now you students you are not even you are not out of this problems for you sometime you might be having a difficult subject to to learn you might have 
a, a challenge in understanding certain subjects, certain concepts. You might have a fear of exam. You might have a fear of success. Whether can I get the success for all the hard work I have done? Sometimes you might be having fighting, misunderstanding with your friends. Sometimes you might be having a fear that what if you don't get admission into the right college? Now these are very real problems, and we cannot avoid them because mostly they are not in our hand. But what is in our hand is how we decide to deal with them. What is in our hand is how we decide to deal with these problems. Now, one, one question would arise. Knowing our identity in Christ, how will it help us to get through these life, real life challenges? Yeah, how would can? Now, I would answer this question like this. If we know our identity as a child of God, then we are also aware of the very promises God has given us while we are going through these challenges. Using our identity as the child of God will help us to deal with our life Goliath situation. Now, in some cases, our identity will help us to know when we need to surrender these challenges in God's hand in our prayer. Our identity will tell us, let's take this thing in prayer first to God. In some cases, our identity will help us to remember that we need to wait patiently for God to work in our collapse situation, even when the wait is long, long, long. That our identity in Christ will teach us. In some cases, our identity will help us to make the sense of our defeats and our failures that we receive in some cases. This situation will remind us that God has bigger purpose and even he will use our failures and our defeats for his glory and for our success eventually. In some cases, our identity will help us to receive God's miraculous intervention in our problems. Just like that, in some cases. In some cases, our identity will help us to know that God will mend hearts. It's not you and me, it's not our word, but it's God who will mend hearts that have been hurt and that have been broken. Our identity will tell us that healing and restoration will eventually come from God. So my dear family, our identity in Christ serve as an unshakable foundation during the time of trials and temptation. Yeah, once again, I think I'm moved. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Apostle Paul share this unshakable promise from God uh, to us in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. What does he say? For I am convinced. This is Apostle Paul, by the way. And he says, For I am convinced that neither death or life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, nor neither height nor depth, nor anything else in the creation will be separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is our identity and nothing can take us that away. That is the identity which you and I need to live. Which means, now having known our identity, how do we then live out our identity? Now, sometimes it's just not sufficient to navigate life challenges through our identity in Christ, but we also have to live out this identity as a child of God all the time. So our identity in Christ calls us to live a life which models Jesus' character. Our identity in Christ call us to live a life that models Jesus' character, including love, forgiveness, and compassion. Now, a victorious Christian is the one who practices love unconditionally, just like God loves us despite our sinful nature, despite our failure, despite who we are. 
a victorious christian is the one who practices forgiveness even when it is difficult to let go we can be hurt someone would have really hurted us but a victorious christian is the one who practices forgiveness in jesus a victorious christian is the one who shows compassion even when we are hurt and we have less resource but yet we give full of hearts we give sacrificially and that is the very big appeal that apostle paul does to each one of you to live by the godly attributes in colossians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14 and what does he say therefore as god's chosen people who we our identity in christ holy and dearly loved who we are we are holy and we are dearly loved and then he says clothe yourself with compassion with kindness with humility with gentleness and patience and then he goes one step more asking us in christ by his strength and by his spirit bear with each other and forgive one another if any one of you have grievance against someone in christ bring that forgiveness forgive as lord forgive you you and i know how many times god has forgiven us despite our failures despite how much wrong we have been right and over all these virtues he says put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity above everything let love be your scale of measurement everything because it is the only thing that binds us together in perfect unity so quite a big expectation right when i was preparing i was overwhelmed is it possible now apostle paul wants us to clothe ourselves with god's attribute that means our way of life should be practicing compassion practicing kindness practicing humility practicing gentleness practicing patience and not only we need to practice this ourselves but it is he also wants us in a process to forgive one another and not only he want us to forgive he want us to love them like the way god has loved us because that is the only thing that will keep us in perfect unity and then how can we achieve this through our identity in christ we need to practice this virtues in and through jesus we need to attribute we need to practice this attributes and this virtues in and through jesus in his power and in his strength by the guidance and the wisdom of the holy spirit which means you just do what the holy spirit tells you and he will give you wisdom he'll give you guidance he'll give you the strength to practice this virtues right and how can we practice this virtues in and through christ and the one way of doing that is by partaking in the act of holy communion where we come together in perfect unity our differences steps back when we step in to to partake in the communion we are in perfect unity and we are in complete love with each other not through our own effort but through the very finished work of christ on the cross by the spirit he brings that perfect unity in us and so today when you will stand up to take part in the communion know that there is a perfect unity and a complete love through christ always remember that at the foot of the cross we find compassion we find kindness we find humility we find gentleness and we find the very patience we need because the lord's supper is the supreme expression of all our worship it is the act in which the risen and ascended jesus meet us at his table in the power of his spirit to bring his passion to our remembrance and to draw us to himself that we may share in the communion with the father and his intercession for the world see here the triune god is working with us and with the world we are never more truly human than we are at the lord's table when christ jesus draws us and into his life of communion 
with the father and into communion with each other and to communion with each other with the father and with each other that's the beauty of lord's table that's that's the very essence of being human thank you pastor praveen let us all pray and submit ourselves uh, into his hand heavenly father gracious lord it is at the cross where you have brought in communion with father through you by the spirit it is at the cross where we are complete it is at the cross that we are forgiven it is at the cross that we receive the love and love in abundance to live our life by o lord and so we pray o lord through your spirit give us strength to love each other give us strength to forgive each other give us strength to live with each other give us strength so that we have compassion on each other give us strength to model your very character as we are created in your image and in your likeness so lord and may you receive all the glory all the honor o lord and we are privileged today to be in your presence thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen